is uh, a hand magic trick 24, which is how to practice arpeggio patterns. But it's really much more than that. Uh, and as we go forward, we'll talk more and more about the ingredients in this particular very special episode, because this episode touches on what is really the nexus point of all musical construction, which is how the melody interacts with the chords and how the chords interact with the melody in what we're playing. In other words, this is the thing that every guitar player wants to know. I'm at a jam session, some guys are playing some stuff, I'm playing some stuff, and everybody turns around and says, okay, take a solo. What are you playing? That's what you're going to learn in this episode, among many other things. So, uh, without further introduction, let's just jump right into it. Playing over the changes really is just playing notes that have uh, a powerful or strong relationship with the notes in the chord that's being played. And as a starting point for us, the, the first set of notes that we learn that have a very, very strong relationship with the chord that's being played are the arpeggio for that chord. So let's jump in. I want this to be more of a practical hands-on exercise, more of a hands-on uh, episode than we've done before. Uh, on this subject and get you into practicing this. And, and I'm going to put together in episode 25 basically just a practice track. The arpeggio patterns that I'm presenting in this uh, segment are available in a link in the description under this video. So you can click on there and download your own copy of the arpeggio patterns that I'm presenting. You can have them right in front of you on your music stand. You can go to episode 25 and just click on the track and practice as, uh, as much as you like. Uh, so that you can spend a lot of hands-on time with these patterns. Okay, so let's flip over to diagram number one. This is uh, the, uh, the pattern that we first introduced, I think, back in episode 22. This is the pattern of the C major scale in the first position, or what we call the C position on the neck. So that black bar that's going across there is the nut, and this is where all the notes are located. And where it says fret number there, of course, that would be fret number one. The black line is the nut, and the row of notes above are the open strings. So, those are the notes of the major scale. Okay, so what we have to understand is where do our chords come from? Uh, because the, if we're playing the arpeggios, the arpeggios are just the notes of the chords. What are the notes in the chords, and where do they come from? Let's have a quick look at diagram two. Let's have a quick look at diagram two. So this shows you... Uh, a very simplified version of a, a worksheet I've prepared called uh, the Chord Spelling Circle. And on here you can see what we've done is we filled in the notes of the C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And I've spoken uh, before about how we refer to those as the degree numbers. This becomes important when we start looking at uh, playing in different key signatures because what we do is we stop thinking, especially on the guitar. The guitar lends itself to not thinking too much about the specific note names, but being able to think in terms of the degree numbers and just be able to easily play in any key signature. So if we go over to diagram number three in that same circle. Now you can see what I've done here is I've written in the notes of the C major seven chord. Now that's a C chord plus one extra note. We're going to add the extra note just so that we have four notes to play around with in our arpeggio. Uh, rather than just three, and we might as well learn all four at once. So where do these notes come from? Well, as we go around the circle, see what we do is we construct chords in Western music, in most music, we can construct chords using diatonic harmony, which means we take every second note or every second tone in the scale. Uh, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as stacking thirds, okay? So you're just adding a note every second step along. So we take the note C, we skip D, we take the note E, and you now we have C, E. We skip F and we add G, we skip A and we add B. Now we have four notes. Those four notes, uh, the first three notes, make up the triad of the chord C, and all four of those notes can be considered to be part of the C major arpeggio. Our notes are simply, uh, so our notes are simply uh, uh, we take every second note, starting at the note that is the root of our chord, and that gives us our, the notes of our chord and the notes of our arpeggio, because they're one and the same. Now if we flip over to diagram four, here we go, we've got those exact same set of notes, and what we've done here is I've identified every position, every spot, or every note in that C arpeggio, 
no matter where it starts. So now we're not starting at Do, we're not starting at one, we're just saying of all of those notes, let's find all of them that are in this little pattern of, of circles and let's write their names in. And it makes sense, you can see the open E string, G of the third fret on the E string, B is the second fret on the A string, C is the third fret on the A string, E is the second fret on the D string, G is the open G, B is open B, C is the first fret on the B string, E is open E string again, and G is the third fret on the high E string. So those are all the notes that we want to be able to play. And you can learn the pattern from this. Okay, you can learn the arpeggio pattern, but then you're playing something, if, if you learn the, the pattern from these notes, the way they're presented in diagram four, your practice takes on the, uh, t your practice takes on the, uh, the character of scale practice, which is, I find very, very hard for students to grasp and, uh, and have fun with. So instead, what I suggest is this, which is diagram five. What I've done here is I've taken these notes in diagram five and I've put them into little patterns. We go up by uh, four notes and then down by one. And then we move the whole pattern up one note. Okay, so you'll see the first pattern starts on E, goes E, G, B, C, and then back to B. Then the second pattern is the same as the first one except we start on the second note of the first pattern. And we go G, B, C, E, and then back to C. And so we do the same thing. So I'll play these for you. I'm going to play them, and then I want you to play them, okay? So these, uh, these notes uh, are the, uh, these are the arpeggios for the C chord. Okay, so the first one is this. Okay, now you try playing that. Okay, and now we're going to go on to the second one. Now you try playing that. I'm going to go on to the third one. Now you, sorry, you play that one. And now we're going to go on to the fourth pattern. Here's the fourth pattern. Okay, now you play the fourth pattern. And move on to the next diagram, diagram six, and that's going to show us uh, a set of three more patterns because we're going to make a, a pattern all the way across using up all the notes that are on that diagram. So uh, to go on to this next diagram, there are these notes here starting at the second fret on the D string. Okay, so you play that one. And now we're going to play the next one, the second pattern on uh, diagram six, and that's and now you play that one. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to play the last pattern here on diagram six. And now you play that one. Let's look at diagram seven, it's on the screen now, and in diagram seven we're looking at, we're using the same process of stacking thirds or uh, taking every second note of the scale, but this, but this time we're building the notes of the G chord and we're building the G arpeggio. So, we start at G, and we go skip a note and then take a B and add that, skip a note and we grab D and add that, we skip a note and add F. Now, something we need to bear in mind is in the C major scale, um, the F note is the, the flat seven. So the chord we're actually building here, if we play that F as part of the chord, that chord will become a G seven. If we play that same chord without the F, it's a G. But musically, those two chords are interchangeable. Um, so that's not a big issue for us. Our four note arpeggio is the notes G, B, D, and F. Now, if we look at uh, diagram eight, over here on diagram eight, uh, you can see the locations of all these notes on diagram eight. And again, this is just to show you where they are, um, but I'll present you with the patterns in a moment. 
Okay, okay so if we go over to diagram 9, here's the uh, first line of patterns. We have four little patterns. These are patterns to be played over the G chord. These are arpeggios of the G chord. Okay, so the first one is this. Okay, so you try playing that one. Okay, and now the second pattern for the G. Okay, now you try playing that one. The third pattern for the G. And now you play that one. Now the fourth pattern for the G. And now you play that one. Uh, now we're going on to diagram 9, which has the second line, the last three patterns. Okay, so here you can see the last three patterns of the uh, arpeggios for the G chord. Okay, and I'll play these, starting with the first one on the left. Okay, you try playing that one. Okay, and then uh, the second one on that line. Okay, you try playing that one. Finally, the, the last G chord arpeggio. Now you play that one. Okay, so you can see how easy these patterns are to get under your fingers. Now it takes a little bit of practice to make them fully automatic, but what you're learning here is you're learning the major scale, you're learning where the notes are, uh, what we really want to do initially is just practice these patterns. I'll come back to that. And uh, diagram 11 is the, the same chord circle again, and so now we're going to have a look at the F chord in our uh, chord sequence, and uh, where do the notes from the F chord come from. So the first note is the note F, of course, and then we go around our circle clockwise, we skip G and we go to A, that's the second note of the F chord. And then we skip B and go to C, that's the third note of the F chord. And if we skip D and go to E, that's the fourth note. And that would be an F major 7. If we play just the FAC, it's an F chord, a simple F chord. And, we, and we'll just switch over, flip over to uh, diagram 12. And now you can see all the notes that are in the F chord, F, A, C, E. You can see those notes as they appear on your guitar. Okay. And if you want, you can pause at each of these diagrams that shows the notes on your guitar, and you can practice those in a scalar way if you want to. But my intention is for you to spend more time learning the small patterns that are easy to use because they're immediately useful, they're musical, they're kind of fun. Let's switch over to diagram 13. Here we are with the patterns for the F chord, and I'll just play those again, and you can grab your guitar and play them after me just to begin to get familiar with them. Okay, here's the first pattern in diagram 13. Okay, you try that one. Okay, and now here's the second pattern. Okay, you try that pattern now. The third pattern. Okay, you try the third pattern. And here's the fourth pattern. You try the fourth pattern. Okay, so in diagram 14 we've got the last three patterns for F, and I'm going to start with them here, starting with this first one. Okay, so now you try playing that one. And then here's the next one. Now you try playing that pattern. And then here's the last one. Now you try playing that pattern. That is our hands-on practical introduction to arpeggios. Uh, I've presented the patterns, the uh, 
The worksheet that contains the, the arpeggio patterns that we presented today is available in a link that is in the uh, description under this video. Um, episode 25 is simply uh, a series of practice tracks. There's about a minute of the chord C, a minute of the chord G, and a minute of the chord F that you can just play uh, and uh, practice your different arpeggio patterns uh, over and over again whenever you like. And then there's about two minutes of the little song that I played at the beginning of this episode. And uh, it's just uh, C, G, F, and then a little turnaround of C and G. And you can play that same track and practice playing through the arpeggios using your little worksheet. Uh, I don't recommend, uh, you know, uh, trying to practice this like scales, just practicing it over and over again and, and making yourself sick with it. It's a fun little exercise to work on. Work on it and have fun. When you tire of it, you know, I, I use stuff like this as a warm-up and I practice these things uh, as a warm-up or I'll practice them for five or ten minutes just for fun. And when it stops being fun or when my uh, focus starts to drift again, I set it aside and go back to work on a song. But uh, this is a, a huge skill builder. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of meat on these bones. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. If you are enjoying it, uh, please uh, let me know. If you have any questions or if you, uh, if you uh, want to know more about this, by all means, uh, subscribe. You can just uh, click on my little head. It's probably floating around over here. And you can click on my head to subscribe to the series. If you want to look at more stuff like this in depth, uh, by all means, get in touch with me and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one Skype session or two. So uh, I'll see you next time. Talk to you soon.